continue talking about our theme and, and the idea every single week is we want to go and win a championship we want to be the best at what we do uh, y'all know that's our behalf and so uh, spring training is literally about how we prepare it, it's not um, it's a great slogan for baseball and baseball is an analogy that we sometimes talk about but the idea is we have to prepare in order to be successful and so uh, a part of preparation though you get ready to do something and you set out with goals right so part of preparation is sitting down and going hey where do i want to be where do i want to be at certain points um we talk about goal setting a lot around here we have numbers we track how do we do yesterday we can tell you how we did yesterday in revenue we put up callbacks on a weekly basis and what i want to say is the hardest thing sometimes in life is to be honest about where you are. And if you're not honest about where you are, you'll never end up where you're supposed to be. And so what I want to say today is this. So part of the process of the journey uh, of spring training, of preparing yourself to be the best, is from time to time you have to stop and go, where am I at? Have I gotten better? Have I backslid? Did, did I set these New Year's resolutions and they were no more than ink on a paper? Or have I actually made progress? A lot of you have uh, recently got your license and man, I'm so proud of you guys. We got so many people uh, that are moving from apprentice to technicians. And so one of the things that you're going to do when you're on your own is you're going to go, hey, where, where are my goals? What, what am I trying to achieve here? And from time to time, you need to stop and go, where am I at? And then, what does that allow you the opportunity to do? You can determine, okay, if I want to be the best, what does the best look like? How is it defined? Because if you don't define it, you'll never achieve it. If you don't write a number down, there's nothing to pursue. And in order to be on that path toward that goal, that number, that whatever it is, achievement, you have to be honest. I mean, you really do. And so, one of the things I discovered about myself that just... Uh, blew my mind recently, I, I'm using an app uh, for Weight Watchers in my journey that I'm on to try to get healthy. And so I've used it off and on, and I've never stuck with it. But I do have data that I can look back to. And so when you weigh in, uh, I weigh in every Monday, and I have to record it in the app. And it gives you a graph, like a bar chart. And it shows you week by week where you are. And... The reason that motivates me is because what kind of graph would I like to see? The opposite of my bank account. All right? I want to see the graph that's going down. But I, I scrolled way back to 2020. And here's what I discovered. At the beginning of COVID in 2020 to August of 22. So from 2020... 2022, I discovered by looking at the data that I had gained 52 pounds. 52 pounds during COVID. Now, here's what I'll promise you. I didn't wake up one day and go, man, I'm, I'm 260. I'm shooting for 400. I, I didn't do that. I didn't go, man, I'm going to eat as much as I can possibly eat. I just used food to cope and I found myself eating more than I should, worse things than I should. COVID was kind of a weird time for all of us. And so I, I learned by looking at the data that man, I ended up in a place that I didn't like, right? And, and so what I want to say to you guys is sometimes there's a drift. You, you, you just don't realize that there's a drift, man. You got to go back. I always tell people you need to go back to a time in your life where you were passionate about something and you woke up and you go, man, I want to achieve greatness. I want to be the best. I, I want to be the best technician at Baker Brothers. I'm proud of my uniform. I can't wait to get on my own truck, all those things. And you're just, you got this energy about you that is good and moving forward. And then over time, it just kind of begins to slowly drift. We do it in our finances. We do it in our marriages. We do it as parents. Man, there's nothing better than becoming a new parent. You, you get this baby and it's just overwhelming. And you go home and you go, man, you've painted the room. The nursery's right. 
when they're 14, they tell you, man, my carpet's no good. And you're like, oh, it'll be okay. <laughs> you, you wouldn't do that when they were newborns. You ever seen a first baby's room when he comes home to the hospital? I mean, it's got chandeliers and like expensive woodwork. And you're like, man, I can't afford this $1,200 crib, but I'm going to pay notes on it. Because you're like, man, my kid's going to have the best. And then over time, what happens? It's like, Dad, I'm hungry. Well, there's some bologna and bread in there. Good luck. Um, it's just human nature. It's, it's what we do. And so when I read about people, though, listen, that have high uh, achievements, when I read about people who do achieve greatness, that whether it's in sports or career or life, one of the commonalities is, is they have a process in their life where from time to time they go, where am I at? You know, where am I at? For me, like this whole deal of, you know, COVID, 52 pounds, I had to get on the scale and go, I have a problem, right? I have a problem. My friends have told me, my heart doctors told me, my general doctors told me, my wife has told me, but it took me getting on the scale and looking in the mirror and going, hey man, this isn't good. I got to do something different. Right? So let me give you three things I want you to remember today. If you take notes, write it down. Number one, if you want to achieve greatness, you got to admit where you are. There has to be a point. There has to be a dot on the graph that you go, right now, I'm motivated or I'm not motivated. I'm working hard. I'm really coasting. I'm learning new things or I'm just kind of drifting through life. You're going to find yourself in one of those categories. But what is it? Because a lot of people, if you go up to them, if I go up to Garrett and I go, hey, Garrett, how's things going at work? Uh, awesome. And then he drives off and he goes, dude, this sucks. What's Garrett going to keep doing? What's he going to keep doing? Saying this sucks every day. He doesn't drive off, no sense of purpose, no drive, no determination, no new goals. Because he can't be honest with himself. One of the best things I've ever read in my life is you can't trust a person who's not honest with themselves. And, and guys, I'm not talking about just saying I suck. I'm saying there are things in your life that you have to look at and go, you know what? I'm a long way from where I'd like to be. And I don't care who you are in times... You know, they're difficult or challenging. Sometimes that's what happens. The, the guy living under the bridge over here on Luke 12 didn't wake up at 30 and go, man, I want to be homeless. I think I'll start using heroin tomorrow. I want to leave my family and my career and beg for food and put a sign on the curb. Do you think that's anyone's ambition in life? But there's plenty of people that end up there, right? Because they didn't have any mechanism to go, where am I? Do I like where I'm at? Do you like where you're at in your life? How would you score yourself in all these areas, like physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually? Where, where are you in those things? And how do you know? you got to look at yourself in the mirror sometimes. I'm not talking about going and asking 10 people, hey, where do you think I am? You already know, right? Don't you? Can, you, can we all admit... Do you guys know where you're at in your life? Anybody? Would you grade yourself today and go, I know where I'm at? Anybody? Raise your hands. I just want to make sure you're awake. Do you know where you're at? If I said, give yourself a 1 through 10, how, how, how are you doing in life right now? What would the number be? You all got a number in your head? So admit where you are. If it's a 5, don't pretend to be an 8. You're deceiving yourself. And you see what happens when you deceive yourself. You don't change anything. So look in the mirror. Be reflective. Number two, here, here's a big deal, guys. I, I want to just spend a couple minutes on this. Admit how you got there. Not, not, don't just admit where you are. I'm a five. Admit how you got to be a five. And this is huge. Because if you don't own it, you won't change it. If, if you can't say, I got here by... Choices. I can admit right now that my guy on the scales at plus 52 pounds, it wasn't because somebody force-fed me. I'm 54 years old. Nobody snuck in my room at night and stuffed my face full of enchiladas. Nobody did that. 
Nobody would go eat Mexican food, five baskets of chips and salsa, six coats by the time I checked out of there. One meal. Nobody made me do that. And, and here, listen, here, here's a chance. I always talk about how can we be different at Baker Brothers? One of the main things, if we could all corporately come together as a group, as a team, and own where we are, man, it would change everything. I, I would love to be a part of a team of people where there's honesty and authenticity, and you go, you know what, I screwed up. Because people who are willing to own their mistakes are also the ones who will change them. But when you live in a life where you hide everything and you go, man, I hope I don't get caught and I know I damaged that home or I heard that toilet crack or whatever it is, then that tells me you're covering up, you're hiding. You'll never live your best life looking over your shoulder. You got to look ahead and forward. You got to be honest. Because when you run looking backwards, what's going to happen? You're going to run into stuff. You're going to run out of your lane. You're going to get disqualified. You're going to trip and fall. But when I'm looking ahead and I'm honest, and here's the connection. If I'm always looking over my shoulder, you know why I do that? Because i got something to hide. And in our culture, listen, if you can be honest about where you are, you're different than most people. Because most people spend their whole life trying to hide or cover up or not be found out. They go, man, how's your marriage? Oh, it's good. And you know, dude, you're one bad fight away from divorce. But if you could say that and get help, then it changes. You go, man, how's, how's your finances? Well, we're doing good. You're behind on three payments. You, you're barely making it. You borrowed from all your family members. You can't figure it out. If you can't admit it, you'll never get help. Some of you are in that place now. You're, you're in debt. You need to go sit down with David. Swallow your pride. Make an appointment and go, dude, I need help. I don't have a budget. I don't know how to manage my money. He would love to sit down and talk to you about this stuff. Um, I think sometimes physically, where you at? That's what I just went through. Get on the scale. Look at your routines. And I'm not talking about weight loss. I'm trying to be healthy. Uh, last night I walked 2.2 miles, 45 minutes. Did I feel better or worse when I got home? I felt better. I got to start moving. I do. Because for me, when I admit how I got there and I own it, then I'm able to change it. Right? Take any substance, alcohol, drugs, food, anything. Why do we reach for it? I'm trying to kill the pain, right? Where's the pain come from? I'm hiding something. It's a cycle. If we can just come clean, be honest, then we can make a difference. We can move, right? Um, it's not the teacher's fault. It's not the coach's fault. It's not the politician's fault. It's, it's not. We are responsible for how we live. And man, when you can get that right, yeah, all those things matter. Are there unfair teachers, bad coaches, and bad politicians? Yes. Are you going to change that? Or are you going to change you? I'm going to stick to me. Because it's all I can control. So admit where you are. Last thing is this. Where do you want to be? If you're a five, what's your number? Where do you want to be? Nine, ten, where do you want to be? So here's what I'll tell you. You gotta see it. Because vision compels us. Vision inspires us. Where do you want to be? I meet with people all the time. I've been doing it for 20 something years. And one of the things that I love to ask a person is where do you see yourself in five years? And I'll tell you this, the more detailed you write that down, and you go, I want to be this, I want to make this much money. I want to live in this house. I want to have this many kids. I want to be in a relationship that's deep. I don't know what that means to you, but if you see it, then you can get there. Because vision inspires us, right? This morning I got up and I scrolled through my memories on my phone and I found three pictures of me from 2022. And I looked at them. 
I clicked on it so that it would be fresh in my bill. Why did I do that? Because it reminded me that that's not who I want to be. It reminded me that I have a vision of being healthy. I got to stick to it, right? I know, man, there's a risk in me saying this because if I quit, it doesn't look good, right? But I'm going to just be vulnerable. That's what I'm shooting for. That's what I see. I want to play with my grandkids, right? What do you see in your future? Where do you want to be? Write it down. Be specific. And here's the last words of wisdom today. Get moving. If you don't take a step forward, you'll always be standing exactly where you are. Get moving. Have a good day.